here looking for houses that are growing weed in. I use a heat seeking camera to find crops so that I can just go in, basically, when the crop's ready, take the door off, bag the plants up as they are, and that's it, we're out of there. With the highest level of consumption on the continent, no one takes drugs quite like the British. This is High Society, a series where we meet dealers, users, and manufacturers to find out why the UK has one of the world's most excessive drug habits. Weed is the most popular illegal drug in the UK. With the underground economy worth an estimated £6 billion, nearly half of British people support legalizing weed, and several police departments across the country have been quietly deprioritizing it. But last year, when 200,000 people signed a petition to legalize cannabis, it's long overdue that we call time on the so called war on drugs. Parliament shut it down completely. In fact, as the rest of the Western world moves towards legalization, the British government seems no closer now than it was half a century ago, when people like Lee Harris first started advocating for weed. Hello, jobless. At 80 years old, he owns London's oldest head shop, and this year, he was running for London mayor, representing the Cannabis is Safer Than Alcohol party. This man for books like the mayor. Yes, thank you. He told us to find him in Hyde Park on 420. One level. Thank you. The annual pilgrimage of the UK stoner. Hello. Happy Hello. 420. One love. Happy 420. Yes, this is like your Ramadan or your Christmas, yes, right? Yes, yes. It's a special moment. Now I was here for the first legalized pot rally 49 years ago. This is part of a long tradition. Here we are almost half a century later. We're still campaigning, defying unjust laws. It's amazing. Thank you. Lovely. One love. <laughs> so is the weed a lot stronger now than it used to be? It was much stronger in that time. You got really stoned. <laughs> so you support weed legalization? Oh yeah, for sure. It's got to be done. Yeah. Made legal. Yeah. Yeah. I am here to protest. All we can do is protest, but the protest has been going on for years. Yeah. And what's it done? Why hasn't it happened so far? Even drug dealers will lose out on profits. Because if it's legal, it's being able to be sold in shops, so dealers ain't going to be getting no shops, are they? Is that a good thing? No, not really. Why is that? Like me, I need to make my bread. I need to make my bread. Everybody stood up for 420. I can't find oh, where my are you bag not is. Oh, he's got to find his leaflets. Lee, you're meant to be campaigning. Not enjoying the sunshine. 30 second chill. As you can see, Lee's hard at work campaigning in the sunshine on 420 in Hyde Park. Chilling out in the lovely springtime. We'll get the votes later. We'll, they'll, they'll come, they'll come. One love to you. And one love right back at you. If the weed smokers of London are organized enough to mobilize a folding table and four tubs of ice cream on 420, then surely they're organized enough to vote for Lee for mayor. Oh, okay. This isn't mine. I just found it. You're gonna eat it now, aren't you? I found it. I can't. I don't think I can. While more than 5,000 stoners attended 420, just 20 arrests were made. And that sort of made the event a success, because even though Lee and his movement seemed destined to remain at the fringe of politics, it showed that the police were willing to allow thousands of people to openly use a Class B drug. It's good of you guys to not arrest everyone because you could easily just throw a whole net and you'd get about a thousand <laughs> cannabis smokers. we need a big net. When it comes to weed, police today are far more concerned with organized crime. We've come to Birmingham because we've heard about this new trend where grow houses are being set up and run by the people you'd least expect, grandmas. 
There's even a local slang term, gropper, which means a granny who runs a grow up. Hello. Hello. Hi. Thanks for inviting us in. Okay. This is a lot more homely and cozy than I expected for a grow house. Thank you. <laughs> Are more and more gangs using groppers to grow weed? More groppers than males. More groppers than men. Groppers don't get caught. Groppers don't go to prison. Less likely. So yes. grannies are taking over the yeah. business? It's less likely for them to think a woman is a drug grower. Do you answer to anyone or are you the No, top? I don't answer to anybody at all. I just grow it, dry it, sell it on. So can we see your, your grow house? Yeah. It's quite warm. Oh wow, it's very hot. Yeah. Wow. There's some base. It smells very... Well, look at me. Very weedy. Yeah, let's grab it. Oh. I feel like we're crouching in the middle of a jungle right now. How many plants have you got here? There's about 16 in here at the minute. Yeah. So how many of these rooms do you have? Me, personally, right now, I think I've got about six. Six of them? Yeah. Okay, so you're running almost a small empire. Well... <laughs> you're being modest. If you like to call it that. And how strong is this? Is this skunk? This is skunk. You can get different levels from high-grade cheese, blue. There's, there's different names for it. Yeah. But, um, it sounds like you, quite, you enjoy it. I do, actually. Yeah. I know I do. <laughs> I do, and it's, 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 help, it's, it's helping me financially at the same time. And all you have to do is keep your electric bill down. Right, so how do you do that? Bring your electric where the, the meter itself can stop, or if you're next, next door to an empty house, bring it door to next door and cover, cover the room so that the light's not detected. How much is this all worth? Grand a piece. Quick turnover. So 16 grand? Yeah, every 12 weeks. Is this like your main source of income? Well, it is, because I mean, I'm on benefits. I'm on disability. So, three kids with one dependent going to uni in September. So, finances me, finances the kids, and it finances my immediate family. Oh, right. I need to come out of it because the fumes alone is just. Woo! Yeah, it's really hot. I feel like Potent. I'm getting high just from the heat in here. So have you managed to basically bypass all of the criminal gangs? I don't have to worry about criminal gangs. I've got gang members in every corner of my family. OK. So I don't have to worry. They've got my back. OK, so it, it isn't just a, a completely innocent operation. You, you do have protection from people who are... I don't use know. them. I don't use them. Right. But I know they're there yeah. if I was to want to use them. Whether she's simply supporting her family, or she's just the innocent face of a criminal business, this gropper is growing 400,000 pounds worth of weed per year. And that kind of money makes this a dangerous game. Especially in Birmingham, recently named the UK's cannabis capital, where drug dealers have gotten really, really good at robbing other drug dealers. So how did you come up with the idea to use a heat-seeking drone to rob weed grow houses? I studied media and art at university. Um, I'm into technical stuff and we just put our heads together and this is how we came up with this. It's really, it's really clever, isn't it? Quite a smart way to do it. I'll tell you what it's like. It's like, um, it's the patient way to do it. Because I, I could just go and like, drug dealers, could like, just go and stick them up and that, that bit will cause you problems. It's nice to be able to check all the way down the road without actually having to walk down the road. I mean, it looks suspicious if we're walking up and down and okay. looking through people's windows. Here is the air vent, which is showing an, a large amount of heat coming out of it. And we're looking for that heat signal. You can see that that vent's got a lot of heat on it. And that's it. There basically. you go, we've got it. <laughs> <laughs> you all right there, Matt? Yeah, do well. <laughs> Is it dangerous to rob people who are growing weed? It, it is in a, in a sense, but it's... What are they going to do? They're not going to... Not a bit able to phone the police, are they're they? They're not going to be able to phone the police. There's more grows than there are police, police officers. officers. So for every grow, there's at least one police officer. How much time have they got to stop and, and look at people that are growing weed? 
It's not a major, it's not a massive crime. Do you know what I mean? Chances are that if this house is growing weed, which it is, possibly isn't the first time it's been watched by the police. Now, it's a case of do we get there first or do the police get there first? That weekend, it seemed like the police in the UK's cannabis capital were winning. They had just burned 2.5 million pounds worth of seized weed. This is a larger cannabis scene than we usually find in the West Midlands. Most of them are found in residential streets in the heart of our communities. This isn't just a little bit of, of cannabis. This is serious and organised crime that is funding other organised crime. But even the police don't agree on weed. Five police chiefs from other parts of the country have instituted a sort of de facto decriminalisation by declaring they're no longer pursuing the small-scale production and use of cannabis. What I want is a drugs policy for England and Wales, which is focusing on minimising harm and optimising the benefits that drugs can bring to society. If you're going from weed's public image alone, you could be forgiven for thinking it's legal already. In fact, some people live like it is. UK rapper Black the Ripper has made a name for himself by smoking weed in public places. Legalized cannabis, 420, you know the deal. And posting the videos online. Legalize the thing, feds wanna penalize the thing. I drink a little bit, but reefer is my thing. Married to marijuana. What's the purpose of this van? In my van, I have an ashtray, an ash. I live life, it's legal, like, we just park up, we chilling, we smoking. It says Bank of England on a door panel, like, this It's basically legal already. Yeah. In my mind. And that's how I light up everywhere and live like it's legal. In my head, it's so legit that I don't even realise it's a Class B. Imagine that. They're, they're in the Stone Age, innit, saying it's fucking Class B. And then alcohol and cigarettes, you could go in and buy it any time, go and get fucked up. What's behind the name of Dank of England? Dank of England. We're in the capital, London City, just like the Bank of England is. And we're the Dank of England. The Bank of England sets interest rates. Yeah. What does the Dank of England do? Dank of England is a lifestyle, first of all. Every day I wake up, I smoke and I get high. Dank of England, that's what I do. Like, if you've got bare packs, Dank of England. Do you get what I mean, bro? Yeah. Yeah, man. They got the movement as well, yeah, because it's an army, strong. What's the point of this movement? We're just banging, bro. We're banging, innit? Okay. When you smoke in these public places, what are you trying to show? I'm just showing you that, first off, it's just a plant. And people are like, oh my God, it's like, nobody was hurt, because I'm not a criminal. Nothing was stolen, because I'm not a criminal. It's like. It just smells for half an hour. It's not a big deal, bro. So it's like, when everyone looks at it like it's totally crazy, I just think, what happened? Why do you think people love weed so much? Like, you wouldn't get people buying socks with little bags of cocaine on them. You wouldn't get like That's a whole religion cocaine. started around yeah. like, taking MDMA. That's because them things are not from the earth, bro. That, it is, like, I know the, the plant is, but it's synthetic. It's been changed by a man, yeah? But you see the plants. Even now, like, our surroundings is nice. We don't understand it because we're trapped in a concrete jungle all the time, but if I didn't smoke weed, I wouldn't have aspired to have a van like this because this is some hippie shit, but the weed just m brings that out of me. If I implored you to find one negative thing about weed, could you do it? Of course. I'm not, I'm not in denial. I'm not, like, some in denial person. Weed affects everybody differently. That's the truth. Some people smoke one spliff and they're, like, I don't know, everyone's different. Treat it like you would another thing. If you eat aubergine and your body's fucked, like you don't like it, you wouldn't eat again. So if you smoke cannabis and it's not for you, and it was clean, and you know it's clean weed, and it's just not for you, then don't smoke it, that's what I'm saying. Bro, what's good? That's like eating a tomato, man. Or that's like when people... Well, I know it's different because it's smoke. give you cannabis yeah. psychosis. Nah, but you see cannabis psychosis. Some people are growing crazy and putting crazy chemicals and they're not flushing it out. Yeah. and they're selling it on the street, so of course they're going to be fucked. That's not because of cannabis. So if it was, I'd be fucked ages ago. I don't know, man. I can't remember what you asked me. I'm so high, G. Black the Ripper proves that you can kind of get away with smoking weed these days. In fact, cannabis arrests are down 46% since 2010, 
even though use of the drug has remained roughly the same. Officially, recreational cannabis is as illegal as ever, but medical marijuana may be a different matter. 58% of MPs support legalizing weed for medical use, and a government regulatory agency recently decided to classify cannabinoid oils as a medicine. Which is good news for people like Greg DeHoyt. He's one of an estimated half million people in the UK who use weed as medicine, in his case, for Crohn's disease. When I was about 14, I started getting uh, quite bad uh, digestive problems. When I went to university, you know, smoking cannabis daily, doing fine. Second year, my girlfriend's cousin got diagnosed with cannabis psychosis. We decided, as a, as a couple, we were going to stop smoking because that was the, the right thing to do at the time. And uh, I got really, really ill, like so ill. Like I, didn't, it, I, didn't, I just didn't know that it was my medicine. After getting diagnosed, I literally got given two bags of medication, told to read through some leaflets, and said, they said, good luck. And when I started taking the medication, like, it got even worse. My nausea started flaring up like mad. I was vomiting all the time. Like, I've gone from going from the toilet 12 times a day to 20 times a day, and like 12 times is enough, but like 20, like, you're literally on the toilet every half an hour of being awake. And to try and do your university degree doing that, it doesn't work. I got to the point where I thought, fuck, what if cannabis has caused my illness? I googled cannabis and Crohn's, and the only information I could find was saying about the benefits of cannabis for Crohn's. And I was like, fuck this, I'm just going to smoke weed again. But I carried on smoking it, and then just sort of like did a sort of like check over. I was like, I haven't been having, I haven't gone to the toilet as much recently. I'm not getting the same pangs, I'm not so anxious. I was like, I'm just going to stop taking my meds. And he was like, all right, yeah, fine. And that was it. From, from then on, I've smoked weed every day. And uh, I've not had the, a clear bill of health. I've, I've had problems, but I've been so much better for it. Ultimately, as with all things, the future of weed will be decided by parliament. But for politicians, legalizing drugs is a lot like taking drugs. No one wants to be the first person in the party to suggest it, except Tim Farron, leader of the Liberal Democrats, who's more than happy to pass the duchy on the left-wing side. Why is weed still illegal? Well, I think it's illegal because there is a, a, a fear amongst politicians who are very often, frankly, pretty shallow and chicken about attacking an issue and dealing with an issue uh, where very often they end up getting bad tabloid headlines if they do. For me, all the evidence says um, that whatever one thinks about cannabis, that the uh, regularisation of it, legalisation of it, um, would make more sense in terms of tackling criminality. You would tax, of course, uh, the sale of cannabis, and our best guess, and this is only for England, but our best guess is that we would bring in something like a billion pounds in tax revenue every year, and our commitment would be that you'd spend that money on the National Health Service. A lot of people, especially my age, who smoke weed have problems with psychosis. What are your views on that? I'm no expert, but what I'm aware of is there are basically two chemicals um, within cannabis, one that can, can potentially create psychosis, one uh, which doesn't. And because the, the latter strain is, is harder to produce and therefore less available on the street, that it being criminalised makes it more likely that you will use strains of cannabis that could potentially lead to mental health problems. Lee didn't win the mayoral race, but he won over 20,000 votes for the Cannabis is Safer Than Alcohol party. And for a political party whose name is an entire sentence, that's a pretty good result. It's a positive result. It's a move towards worldwide legalization of cannabis. And I'm very proud to be here. Meanwhile, the police are beginning to turn a blind eye to marijuana users. And at least for medicinal cannabis, the political climate is ripe for a law change any year now, which means people like Greg might not have to worry about getting arrested for using what to them is a life-saving medicine. Of course, none of that changes the fact that cannabis is still a Class B drug. And if users, campaigners, and even police want to see any real change, they're going to have to wait for the government to catch up. Thank you. It's strong tobacco. Nice one. <laughs> and where can I get me some of these beads? 